Whether you're looking to sell your home now or you're just curious about its value, there are many websites that promise to give it to you. However, using these sites to price your home in today's market could mislead you into giving away tens of thousands in equity, especially if you need to sell your home fast. Now, because the market is always changing and your home's competition is too, a proven way to prevent this is to hire an expert who is trained to prepare a smart home selling strategy for you. This strategy takes into consideration all the factors involved in the home selling process that are proven to sell homes faster and for up to 18% more than the methods of traditional real estate agents. As you probably know, finding an expert qualified to sell your home can be a daunting task. See, in most states, with just 45 hours of classroom time and a state exam, anyone can call themselves a real estate agent and they are legally allowed to direct the largest financial decision in your life. Compare this to other licensed occupations, where it takes 600 hours to be a licensed nail technician, or 1,200 hours to be a licensed beautician. It's easy to see why traditional agents are poorly prepared to serve your needs. So, as a homeowner, what can you do to protect your largest asset and ensure you hire an expert who is trained and qualified when you're ready to sell? Thankfully, research conducted by the National Association of Expert Advisors has discovered seven unique factors that an expert will manage in order to sell your home at the top of the market in the least amount of time. The seven factors are expert advice, differentiation, market exposure, agent cooperation, buyer acquisition, offer negotiation, operational execution. So let's start with number one. Pricing expertise. Traditionally, agents price homes using what is called a comparative market analysis, also known as a CMA. This establishes the value of your home by comparing it to historical sales. What most agents don't realize is that historical data doesn't determine how you should position your home in today's market to attract the highest offer. This would be like driving your car while looking in the rearview mirror. What if the home was a rental occupied by college kids? What if the home was packed wall to wall with junk? What if one sold low because it reeked of offensive cat odor? Or worse, what if the seller was motivated because of a divorce or death and needed to unload it quickly? All of these homes would be used against your home's value in a CMA. And as you might imagine, they should have absolutely no bearing on how to price and position your home. So be weary, if an agent presents you a CMA, it is likely they will not be able to price your home to sell for top dollar. This leads us to factor number two, differentiation. To attract the highest possible offer, a home must be positioned to attract buyers who will perceive its highest value. Expert advertisers understand that there is a perfect buyer profile for the buyer that would be willing to pay the most money for your home. Expert advisors attract these perfect buyers by differentiating your home from other homes on the market by first anticipating a buyer's wants and needs. As you'll notice, the key focus here is not on past market sales, but what is likely to attract a top paying buyer in today's market. This means the advice you should receive to attract buyers like this must include how to make small investments in your home's curb appeal to pull buyers off the street, how to inexpensively update outdated interiors to stimulate offers, how to use preemptive negotiation strategies to attract high offers in comparison to your competition, and why you should consider repairs, upgrades, or professional staging to eliminate the potential for attracting low offers. Statistically, the payoff for differentiating your home like this will yield you more equity in less time, and that's worth celebrating. Moving on to factor number three, market exposure. Once your home has been differentiated to target top paying buyers like a loaded cannonball, it's ready to fire. But this next factor ensures when you launch your home onto the market, it's aimed at the right target. This requires you to be especially careful when selecting a professional. Here's why. Exposing your home to the market requires marketing. Research shows that the average agent only spends $89 a month on marketing and only sells an average of eight homes per year. On the other side, top agents will tout their large budgets for newspaper, TV, home magazines, and a list of hundreds of websites where they advertise. So you'd think that the answer is obvious. Hire the top agent, right? Not so fast. The key to a smart marketing plan for your home starts with a clear understanding of where buyers are going to search for homes. With thousands of places to invest, you want to fish where the fish are biting. Expert advisors know the top websites that attract the most buyers and employ a deep, not wide marketing strategy to get more qualified eyeballs on your home. 
Since the agent you hire is essentially investing the commission you are paying them, you want to have an agent that tracks every dollar and the return on investment. Now, a widely known but little discussed selling factor that significantly increases the likelihood of you getting a top dollar offer is factor number four, agent cooperation. Agent cooperation simply predicts that there is a greater than 50% chance that once your home is exposed to the market, another real estate professional will bring you a buyer. Since the largest pool of potential buyers are probably under the guidance of another agent, it's critical that your expert advisor allocate a portion of their marketing budget to get your home in front of the top agents in the market who represent buyers. This means hiring an expert advisor who understands the current incentives that motivate other agents to bring their best clients is as critical to success as differentiating your home is to attract targeted buyers. Be wary of the agent that offers to accept lower commission. Often this leads to a lower compensation being offered to the agents that potentially have a buyer for your home, resulting in little to no activity on your house. This brings us to factor number five, buyer acquisition. With your home differentiated to attract top dollar offers, a strong marketing budget in place to expose your home to targeted buyers, and an aggressive plan to motivate cooperating agents to bring you their best clients. Hiring a professional who has developed an immediate response system is critical to acquiring a buyer for your home. Think of this like the circuit breaker in your house. Emails, calls, and showings are like electricity for the sale of your home. So, without a system to process and qualify their flow, you risk shorting out a top dollar offer. Here's why. When a buyer visits your home online, a cooperating agent calls to set up a showing, or someone calls from your yard sign, studies repeatedly show the fastest response wins the deal. Anything more than 15 minutes lowers the chance of your agent making contact and decreases showing your home by up to 105 times. Therefore, ask the professionals you're considering who answers the phone while they're busy with other clients? What training or certification do they have? How do emails and website leads get responded to over the weekend or after hours? And what is their average response time to an incoming lead? An expert advisor understands they're running a business and solid systems and processes are needed to successfully manage all of the variables in the home selling process. All right, the next to last factor that influences the likelihood you get top dollar for your home is Factor number six, offer negotiation. Regardless of how well a home is positioned to attract the perfect buyer, they will want to order their own inspections, will want to pay less than full price, and will likely make demands you're not comfortable agreeing to. Therefore, not enough can be said then about hiring an expert who can negotiate an outcome that serves your best interests. Too many good deals go bad, and time is always of the essence. If you lose a good deal because of bad negotiating, it could be weeks to months before another deal that good comes your way, and the market could have shifted out of your favor during that time. So do your homework. Ask the professionals you're considering if they have a strategy for negotiating, and if they do, you're likely in good hands. The last factor that brings everything together is factor number seven, operational execution. The sale of your home is much like flying in an airplane. You want an expert in the cockpit who's flown hundreds of times and follows a set of documented processes to get your plane safely into the air and back on the ground again. You would never want your pilot to be the person who is checking the air in the tires, fueling the plane, washing the windows, or serving drinks up and down the aisle. And because there are over 115 unique individual variables that go into the successful sale of every home, you don't want an agent who doesn't have systems and relationships in place to manage the process. Like a safe flight, it takes many people working together to get your home sold for top dollar. When hiring an expert, ask about their relationships with title companies, mortgage lenders, photographers, lawyers, sign companies, professional stagers, inspectors, and cleaning crews. The expert will be prepared to explain how they work together to get your home sold. By now you know selling a home is a process, not an event. You also learned how to hire an expert who can attract the perfect buyer, willing to pay top dollar for your home. So if you're selling, the next logical step is to request a free, no commitment, smart home selling strategy from an expert advisor. Expert advisors are members of the National Association of Expert Advisors who are trained and certified to prepare a smart home selling strategy that can sell your home faster and for up to 18% more money than the traditional real estate agent. Look for the seal of approval, and to have this agent help you, call the number now. 
All right, cool. So obviously you can see the benefit of having that go out, right? Cool. Everybody get some, some popcorn and some soda? Very nice, excellent. Um, what's that? All right, so, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, need you to go to the resources section of your, uh, your binder. And uh, it's pretty much, uh, hold on. Thank you very much. Or we could just let Crystal tell us and save a lot of time. So, so you open up the resources tab is, is a heavier stock too. Okay, it says resources. And then I want you to go to the CHSA. See now this right here, interestingly enough, the, the proper, the right seller counseling interview is in the resources here, so that's good. So, score. So, the home selling system is 156 and 157. It is in couloir, it's in color. All right, go ahead and grab that. All right, so. So Crystal, when we're done this, we're done for the day, right? All right. Time is it now about 24? Huh? I think we can get this done in about 90 minutes or so, six the latest. I think we, we can definitely two hours, I'm pretty sure. So definitely get you out here before 6.45. Um, so here's what I want you to do, though. I need you to stand up. Stand up. Yeah, I'll need a little traveling music. Probably not really loud, though. Um, I need you to stand up, and then I need you to go and sit next to somebody you don't know. Go. Here we go. Yeah. Take your book with you, yes, because you need to look at this. Yep. Huh? If you're sitting next to somebody you don't know already, you're all set. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, you just got to pair up. You just need to pair up. Just sit next to somebody you don't know. There you go. Get up. Here you go, Rudy. Make it happen. Hey, did you find somebody yet? Have you found somebody? Have a seat. I'll find you somebody. Mimi, did you find somebody yet? Yeah, right here, please. Kara, did you find somebody? Did you find somebody? You good? Lee number two. Did you find somebody, Lee? You got someone? All right. Man, like cows are better at this than we are. So that's your partner? All right, two, two. Who does not have somebody yet? Patricia, do you have somebody? Look how easy that was. Who needs somebody still? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you need somebody. Aren't you guys in the same team? Aren't you guys in the same team? Okay. Who are you with? You need somebody? Allie, you have somebody? Ryan, do you have somebody? Hey, music please. Ash, Ash, music. Can you got the music please? Thank you. Hey, all right, hold on one sec here. Did I go away? Here I am. Um, did I go away? Did I go away? Hey, who doesn't have somebody? Raise your hand if you're not paired up with somebody. You're not Rudy? You're not? Okay, there you go. We got somebody for you. So I'm sitting next to Rudy. What? But I'm not. So come on down. I need you to sit next to Rudy. Come on. Got to role play. Got to work on this.
Thank you, ma'am. Rudy, be nice to Angel. All right, here we go. All right, so here's, here's the dealio. Hey, guys, listen up. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right, listen up. Here's the deal. We're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to do a section, and then you're going to role play with your partner, and you're going to do a section, then I'm going to do another section, then you're going to do a section, and so on, okay? So um, open up to 156 and 157, and we got to work on the listing side of the presentation. And our goal here is to get you to really learn to master this. Um, after I do my part, you'll do your part, and then we'll play a little light music while you're doing it, and then we'll debrief if you have any questions and go from there. All right, so we're, we're here for the, rest, for the rest of the show. So right now we're gonna go to the front side of the listing presentation, okay? You with me? You guys are with me? All right, so I did uh, yo, yo, yes ma'am. Really? Yeah. Are we? Oh, oh, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I just uh, it's uh, it's in the resources section. You're not. It's the resources section, really. Yeah. Well, here I'll just give you mine. You give me yours. Here. You can get, you can get another one. We're gonna get you another one. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So I'm gonna do this here. So heads up. Let's uh. Let's listen up and I'll go through this with you. Okay, by the way, just a real quick reminder for you folks here and the folks at home. Hello again. Um, at the break, if you did a testimonial, should have gotten a, 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 a raffle card. Who did a testimonial at the break? Thank you. We appreciate that. Let's keep doing those. Social media contests, posts, pics, memes, messages, using hashtag expert advisor boot camp. Best post will be picked on Friday. Okay, cool. So you sit down. You've sat down at the kitchen table, you've gone through the seller counseling interview, you've connected the dots on what their goals are and what they're looking for, and then you need to get into this part of the presentation, right? So, follow along with me. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, did you know that the average home seller could be leaving as much as up to 18% of their equity on the table? You got it? Okay, great. Raise your hand, ma'am. Okay. That's okay. All right, so, you know, thank you, Ashley. So basically, as a seller in general, you're fighting an uphill battle, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Did you know up to 58.4% of homes that fa actually fail to sell? And of the ones that do sell, 80% of them were actually sold below asking price. So it's kind of a, a you know, a double, uh, you know, a double whammy there. If you're, you have less than a 50% chance that your home is going to sell, if it does, it's likely going to sell for 80%. It's gonna, likely going to sell for less than asking price. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is, is that the average agent only sells eight, eight, eight to 12 houses a year. We're going to be changing this. The average agent last year only sold 5.4 houses. That's it. 5.4 houses last year. Okay, so that's it. 5.4 houses. Well, here's what happens, right? There's low, think about it. Inventory goes down, more people get into the market. What happens? Well. Well, you know, and not even FISBOs, just I'm, I'm stuck. I just, we did the straight math from NAR. We get the data straight from NAR. How many agents there were, how many homes that were sold? 5.44, 1.2 million, 1.4 million. Yep, 1.2 million. So yeah, we just did the math, it was like 5.38. So 5.4, we're gonna change that. We're gonna, there's a couple things that need to be changed on this, but uh, anyway, so the average agent only sells, you know, 8, 8 to 12 houses a year. Okay, so my question for you is, is if you only did 8 to 12, home sales a year, how good are you at negotiating? Not very good. How good are you at pricing a home? Not very good. How good are you at doing the job you need to do to get you the seller the most amount of money? Not very good. And there's a reason they only sell 10 to 8 to 12 houses a year, and that's because very, most of them have little to no training and little to no experience. The average real estate agent only gets about 90 clock hours to go ahead and get their license. That's it, 90 hours, which is a terrible shame because if you want to do somebody's nails, you need to get 600 hours of training in. And if I screw up your nail polish, I can go ahead and put nail polish remover on it, right? 1,500 hours to become a licensed beautician, and if I cut your hair incorrectly, it'll grow back. But if I mess up your home sale and I lose you $25,000, you do not get it back, do you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? So it's, it, you know, it's, it's a scary proposition to work with somebody who's untrained and doesn't sell a lot of houses because that's how you end up one of the 58.4% homes that don't sell or your home selling well below market price. 
okay? And so the bottom line is this, is that you know, price is a function of supply and demand. And uh, the more demand I can drive up on your home, the better chance I have of getting the price I'm looking for. My question for you is, is can you see how woefully insufficient $89 a month would be to get your home and all the other homes that another agent might be marketing the demand that it needs in order to get it sold for the price you're looking for? Can't do much for 89 bucks. Dinner for four barely, right? So how is an agent gonna get you the demand driven up on your home needed, I mean necessary, with only 89 bucks a month? And you wouldn't be the only home, right? Right, so it says average agent investment on marketing and promotions average is $89 a month. How am I gonna do a good job with only 89 bucks a month? So you can see how this presents a huge problem, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, don't you? Yes, what we've, what we've come to understand is that there's a phenomenon called the price swing effect, and essentially that means that in every price range there's a top of the market and the bottom of the market. Okay, my goal is to get your home sold for up to 18% more or at the top of the market. And the research that we've done, we've determined that there are 115 variables that need to be proactively managed when helping you get your home sold so that your home sells at the top of the price swing effect. Without proactively managing them, without doing a good job following the, the rules that are associated with doing this, your home could sell for uh, uh, less than top dollar, less than the top of the market, and may end up somewhere in the middle or even at the bottom. That's not something you want to happen, is it? They go, oh, no. They shake their head, no, great. These 50, 115 variables fall within seven laws, and what I'd like to do is spend a little time talking about what each of those laws are and how they work to get you up to 18% more for your home. Okay, you see that? Any questions? Your turn. Oh, we do have a question. Hold on, microphone, please. Russell needs a microphone. There'll be no fun in laughing here, okay? Stop that. <laughs> Dr. Banky, I presume? A, this is a great question. How do we... Uh, <laughs> if you do say so yourself. <laughs> well, you know, I have a great question for you. How, how do we back you up... Your beard do that. How do we back up these statistics if they ask for it? Well, these statistics need to be changed, but they're all from NAR. From NAR. Right. Okay. So they're all being worked on right now, but they're all from NAR. They're actual legit statistics. Right. I actually, you know, it's cool if you send an email to NAR. I mean, I just say they're a national, you know, They are, they're national. These know. are data from the National Association of Realtors and research yeah. that they've done. I actually sent an email to NAR because Johnny Kitchens and I were doing some research on this and I wanted to see what the updated numbers were. I thought that was me. I'm like, what did I do? Did you hit your head? Why would you do that? So, so anyway. I actually sent an email to NAR, and the lady says, yeah, if you send an email to the stats department, they'll respond within 24, 48 hours. They did. They did. Because I wanted to get some confirmation on 71% uh, of homes are sold by co-op agents, and they, they don't break it down that far. It's kind of interesting. But all the data was confirmed, and it's, there's some changes on here which you'll be getting. But uh, anyway, cool. So uh, John? John, is it? Yes. We have a, we've got a... Um, The microphone coming. I got two turntables in your microphone. So you meet with them and you uh, give them the, 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 the analysis as to what they should be listing their house for. Shh, 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 shh. Sorry. You, you do that, but you, you don't do that for a while. But well, I know, but you've, yep. done the, you've done that. And then they, not to be a negative Nelly, but you basically say, okay, well, this is basically where you should be pricing your house. Mm -hmm. And then they say to you, well, I assume that you can get it, you can sell it for 18% more than that. Aha. So what, I, what do you say at that Well, point? the first thing is, is you're not going to tell them the price. You're going to ask them to tell you the price. Right. Uh, Always. You yeah. don't tell them the price, right? It's not your house. Second of all, it's 18% more than what the average agent can get them, not the market. Right? It's up to, first of all, it's not 18% more. It's up to 18% more. And it's up to 18% more than... The bottom of the market, which is where the average agent is going to get you somewhere halfway down or below. We're going to get you up here, okay? So it's up to 18%. It's not 18% more, and it's up to 80% more than the average agent can get you. So let's let's talk about that. I have a $200,000 house. Let's say my mortgage payment is 1,200 bucks. If the average agent sells your home and it takes them a month and a half longer, in fact, who's market? Somebody was talking to Kyle Davis. He said that FISBOs, this is interesting, FISBOs in his market are 120 days, his, his average is 40. So, you know, 1,200 on a $200,000, $1,200 mortgage, an extra 90 days, 3,600 bucks, right? 
36 per, 3,600 percentage on, on 2,000, what's that? That's, how much is that? It's 10, 12, 13, it's a lot, right? 13%, is that correct? No, 14, 28, 15, 3,000. So, I mean, that's, almost, that's over 15% right there just by the fact that he can sell it in 90 days faster, right? But let's just say it's not that great. Let's just say it's 45, it's, it's 4,500 bucks, not 4,500 bucks. Let's just say it's uh, $2,400, right? So uh, then we've got that. And then let's just say that I sell for 2% more than the average. Then you've got that money to add it. And let's just say that I do a great job negotiating and I save you money in negotiation so you don't have to pay much during the negotiation phase. Let's say, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's not just I'm going to sell your house for this much more. I'm just saying that the overall expenses, the overall cost, the overall in for you on everything is going to be up to 18% more because of my expertise, my expertise in negotiation and marketing and advertising and driving, demand, driving up demand on your home. So if the seller says, I thought you were going to get me up to 18% more, I said, yeah, this is 18% more on average up to than what the average agent can get you in the area. Fair enough? But you're also included in FISBOs, too. That's a pretty big story. Listen, you know, we don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. All right? <laughs> All I'm saying is I know that on average I can get you up to 18% up to more than the average market, the average agent, or you could get for yourself, right? I mean, it's not really a sticking point. I mean, most people, it's, here's the thing. We thought it was going to be a great USP and people are going to love it. And it's, it's a good over the phone. It's good face to face. It's good, you know, point, point of sale, POS. But people aren't like hanging their hats on this. You know what I mean? And they're not focusing on that. They're focusing on this stuff here, right? Good question, though. Any other questions? Any other negative Nellies? I mean, questions? Sorry. <laughs> Anybody? We're good? All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, when we role play, we stand up. So I want you to stand up. Stand up. All right. I want you to, all right, stand up. I want you to bow to your partner. All right. I'm kidding. So a little square dance. All right. Bow to your partner. So here's what we're going to have you do. Uh, it's like, like Karate Kid, right? Fight. So um, I want you, one person's going to go through the whole thing, and then the other person's going to go through the whole thing, okay? Ashley, if you'd give us a little traveling music, please. Light music. And, huh? For us to front side only. Just that we're going to role play one section at a time. All right, how are we doing? How do we do with that, okay? Okay, hold on one second. Um, can you give a microphone to this lady over here, please? Too late. Raise your hand. The lady cowering in the corner needs a microphone. Microphone, please. Donde esta el microphone? Right in front of you, I hate that. You had a question, Smalley? Yeah, one second, please. You have a good time? Uh -huh. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Hey. Really? Thank God. You. Yeah. Hey, you? <laughs> no, you. Oh, I thought you said, hey, you. I'm like, Wally? No. Go ahead. Um, okay, Wally, I was just saying that we need the transitions. Like, you were saying it much better. So can we find those which, someplace? Which transition are you talking about? I mean, I'm talking about when you say, when we're telling the seller that, 18% of their uh, equity is left in the table and that up to 58.4% of homes fail to sell and then 80% of those. So there's a transition between one and each that, I recall you, that. that you use. Very. I don't recall that. So can you repeat it then? I'm joking, I know, I'm being a ah. little bit. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Ali's coming to your defense. No, come on, you, no. The segue. Yeah, so this, how much does the segue anyway? You have a question, let me answer. You have a question before you I was just wondering about the data you said you're gonna be yeah, it's gonna. I'm, I just turned it over. It should be the next couple of weeks. Okay. No one knows anyway, but so you can still use this. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they know. <laughs> what? I gotta find out. I know that uh, this is a question probably for uh, Mrs. Lamb as to when that'll be turned around, right? Because I just found we just found all the data a couple of weeks ago, so I know she said she's gonna turn it around. So you'll be kept up to date. The good news is the people you're talking to have no clue. And what's, the, what, and what's the motto? What's the motto? We don't let the facts get in the way of what? That's right. We don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. Is that on the test? Huh? Is that on the test? No, I wish it was, though. So it will be forthcoming, okay? So what's your name, ma'am? Mercedes. Mercedes. So I shouldn't say, hey, you? My Mercedes. Okay, so anyway. So the transitions. Are they just, I mean... Listen, I was an English major in college, okay? And I just, my, my whole, however, whenever I learned anything, I learned it just like I learned English, that 
a book has an introduction, a body, and a, and a conclusion. And each chapter has what? An introduction, a body, a conclusion. And each paragraph has an introduction, a body, a conclusion. And teacher, even a sentence has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, right? Yes, so as, you, know, you can get as microcosmic uh, about that as you want. So I just, for me, it's just transitions were always important. You know what I'm saying? So the transitions I gave you are just my transitions. I can say them again. You can use whatever you want. But I just say, listen, the average seller leaves up to 18% of their equity on, um, of, their, of, their, of their home on the table, okay? And part of the reason, is, and, and, and the reason is, is this, is that number one, 58.4% of homes fail to sell. And number two, 80% of the homes that do sell actually sell for below asking price. So I said, like, it's, it's a double whammy. If you're lucky enough to have your home sell, which you've got less than a 50% chance your home is going to sell, it's probably going to sell for less than asking price, well less than asking price. And the reason is, is that the average agent only sells eight to 12 homes a year. Okay, if somebody sells only eight to 12 homes a year, how good are they and are good are they are negotiating? How good are they at marketing? How good are they at doing all the things that are necessary to get to the most amount of money for your home? Right, price is a function of supply and demand. The more demand I drive up on your home, the better chance I have of getting you the price I'm looking for. If I sell just about one, less than one house a month, how much expertise do I gain in learning how to do that for you? Not a lot. And the reason is, most agents are woefully undertrained. The average agent only requires about, nine, the only average state only requires an agent to get about 90 hours of training in order to become a real estate agent in their marketplace. So, you know, th that's bad because, you know, like I said, it's bad if you want to do nails, it's 600 hours. And if I screw your nails up, I can get my nail polish remover and fix it. You know, if I want to cut your hair, it's 1,500 hours, which is good, you know, bad too, because if I cut your hair wrong, it'll grow back. But Mr. and Mrs. Seller, if I, leave you to, if I lose you $25,000 of equity on your house because I'm unskilled, because I'm untalented, because I don't do a good job, am I going to get that back for you? No, I'm not. And the reason these things happen here is because at the end of the day, most agents don't have enough money. $89 a month, woefully insufficient to market a home properly, to get it top dollar and to make sure that it sells. You can see that, right? The good news is, the good news is, is that we understand <clears throat> that there's a, a phenomenon called the price swing effect, right? We know that there's a top and the bottom of the market for every price range. And what we also understand that there's 115 variables that go, by the way, all the people are like, the 115 variables? Ta-da! Right? Ta-da! Each, each bullet, count them. Don't, please count them. But they're all right there for your, for your consumption. So what we've learned is that there's 115 variables that go into the process of getting your home sold, and they have to be proactively managed. And when they are proactively managed properly and done in the right order and in the right fashion, we know that we can get you up to 18% more for your home and get it to sell the top of the price swing effect. When we don't do that, when agents don't do that, that's why you end up at the middle or the bottom. We also understand that there are seven laws in which these variables fall. And what I'd like to do is talk about each of these laws and how by proactively managing each of these uh, uh, variables within these seven laws, we can get your home sold for up to 18% more. Does that make sense? They go, yes, you go, okay, let's talk about it. Does that help? Yes. Bueno. Who said no? You, you said no? Oh, I thought you said no. I'm like, I'm like, wow, that's, <laughs> don't mind me if I smack you in the face. <laughs> Little traveling music for the microphone. Catherine, just admit it. You said no, just admit it. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that I'm clear on the point of this placemat thing is <laughs> that's the official talk that's actually like trademark technology that's the name this placemat thing i'm a jig <laughs> it's, it's, that's what we called it in our coaching group good is to sell us as an expert advisor is this purpose that's it's not to justify pricing or market position or anything like that at all all i'm doing here is I'm creating doubt. That's like a light bulb for me. Ding! Because I've been trying to make that go the wrong direction. Yep, this is just, I'm just looking, I'm just creating doubt about my competition. Okay, look, Zig Ziglar said it best. You want to you wanna, you wanna sell something? You find a problem and solve it. You find a need and fill it, right? Create the problem, solve it. Here's how I solve it better than anybody else. Awesome. Make sense? Yeah. That's all it is. Create, hey, the there'll be no giggling in my class. No. <laughs> if you have something that's funny to share, share with the class, please. Are you giggling at me? No. I don't care. I grew up a fat kid, you can't hurt my feelings, all right? Law one, law one, ready? We good? Okay, so 
Um, hey, by the way, did anybody die from role playing? Anybody bleed? <laughs> Hair loss? <laughs> Anything like that? Any bruises? You know, I, oh my God, you all lived. And you know, you probably lost a few ounces from sweating, so it's a great exercise. <laughs> All right, you have to role play at least 30 minutes a day. In fact, if I were you, I would get in touch with the person you're with today as long as they made you work hard and you did a good job and set up a role play relationship with them. I know Rudy will role play with every one of you. All right, he'll put you in every 15 minutes every day. He, will, he loves to role play. So Rudy Campos, raise your hand. You want a solid role play partner who's looking to work hard? You go see that man right there, okay? So law one, the law of expertise. There is nothing on this placard by mistake, by happenstance. It is all here intentionally, which means you don't ignore what? Any of it. You say it all, right? Each one of these has an introduction. It also has a trial close. Use them all, please. So here's the deal. Tomorrow, when I do the full listing presentation, I'm going to do the whole thing, OK? Um, and I may revisit that since we're covering each law independently. I may actually go through just a few laws and then tie down. Like, you know, I know Jennifer does this. She goes through the first three laws in detail. And then after that, the rest of the four, she just summarizes. I may do it that way. We'll see. I just like to do the whole thing because you may sit in front of somebody who you know, wears belts and suspenders and needs every bit of information in order to make a decision. So, you know, like they don't make, you know what I'm saying? They don't ever like, you know, so. You guys get, some of you guys got that, right? They're like, you know, sta staple, and, staple and tape. And so anyway, so let's do law one, the law of expertise. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, giving you price before analysis is like the doctor giving you a prescription before making a diagnosis. As part of the law of expertise, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we like to get through the hard questions, right? All good relationships start with getting the hard questions out of the way. I'm confident from going through your seller counseling interview and the interview that we had at the beginning of our, uh, our meeting tonight that I've gotten the answers to all the hard questions. And as an aside here, you know, you want to make sure what their plan B is. Do they have a plan B? You know? You don't want them to have a plan B. You want it to be the only plan, right? If they have a plan B, you need to be able to use that against them, right? You need to be able to articulate why renting your house out to somebody is a horrible mistake financially, emotionally, psychologically. If you can't do that, you need to find out how to do it, okay? Just know this, that if you have to evict somebody, it can cost you for, and loss, and, and it's from, from loss of rental payments, covering your own mortgage, taxes, hiring an attorney, getting the sheriff to kick somebody else, cleaning out the house and fixing it up, it could be as much as 25 grand, all right? What? I'm just saying, on average, it's about 25K. I've got a buddy who's a property manager. He says to evict somebody from one of his houses and to put it back in shape and all the stuff you have to do is about 25K, all right? So you need to be able to articulate to somebody. So my question is, is, you know, is renting it out worth having to maybe pop, cough up as much as 25K? For most people, that's going to be a year's worth of mortgage payments on average, right? You with? All right, good. So anyway, make sure you say this. So I think we've covered all the hard questions. I feel comfortable that I know exactly what you're looking to accomplish. And I'm positive on the guy for the job. We're talking about a CMA. You know, and if they had other people come in before them, hey, did anybody who came in before you use a CMA? Oh, they did. OK, great. Well. Um, I don't use a CMA and here's why, okay? Using a CMA to price a house is like driving in your car and then looking in the rearview mirror the whole time. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, can you think of any other industry where we come up with the current price of a product and use the last six months day to determine that? Nothing, be, no, you can't, right? No cars, furniture, jewelry, groceries, it doesn't matter. There's not one industry that uses the history of pricing in order to determine the current day price. And if nobody else does it, why should we? And we shouldn't. The fact of the matter is, is that we don't know the motivation of the seller. We have no idea what the seller was trying to accomplish when they sold the home. We don't know if there was a divorce. We don't know if there was a death in the family. Sorry, death, cat pee. I know, I apologize. So we don't know if there was a debt. We didn't know what the house smelled like. We don't you know if it was a foreclosure. We don't know what the motivation of the seller is. So the fact of the matter is we can't really rely on that data, right? We just can't rely on that information. Okay, and so as a result of that, I'm not going to be doing a CMA for you tonight. But I am going to go over a very detailed pricing strategy to let you know exactly where your house should be priced to get it sold at the top of the market to meet all your, goal, meet all your goals. Is that fair? And here's how we're going to do this. I pride myself on knowing the market better than anybody else. Okay? I study the real estate market and stay in touch with the real estate market at a level that most agents don't even think about. Because the better I know the information about the market, the better job that I can help you with you know, negotiating not just the initial pricing of your house, but any changes that come down the pike because of what's happening in the outside world. As a result of that, we, we, we go ahead and evaluate uh, a large number of outside threats. I think there's 18 there. About 18 outside threats, and they range anywhere from you know, uh, trends analysis, interest rates, um, all the way to new construction sales, renters versus buyers, and uh, you know, multifamily construction and everything in between. The better I understand what's happening in the entire universe of, of, of home sales in this area, the better job I can do in help you navigating what you need to do with the price of your home 
uh, as it's on the market on a regular basis. Okay, because you know a CMA doesn't take into consideration all these things, but you need to in order to make sure your home gets priced properly every day of the week. In addition to that, there's another nine laws of supply and demand. It makes sense that if uh, there's a lot of people who are just getting out of rentals that want to buy homes, that if you have a, a brand, if you have a first-time home buyer house, that your home is probably going to be in more demand than say a $300,000 house. You'd agree with me, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? Yes, you would. Great. So we also monitor these laws of su supply and demand: number of homes in the market, number of competing homes entering the market all the way through months worth of inventory available. And I'm actually gonna cover that in detail with you when we talk about the pricing of your home in a little bit. Also evaluate the absorption numbers weekly as new competition comes in the market. And we also have systems in place to reevaluate market conditions. So every, every you know, and, and this is what you, know, what you should say to people and this is what you should do. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set you up on a drip campaign from our MLS with all the new properties that hit the market in your price range. And all the ones that go into agreement, all the ones that go off the market, all the ones that expire. Okay, I'm also going to send you this market trends report that I sent you. I'm also going to send you this real market report once a week, once a month, whatever it is, so you can stay on top of the market. In addition to that, we're going to talk every, and then you pick the time frame. Since the market's hot, it's probably every three weeks max. I'm going to call you every 21 days, and we're going to talk about the price of your home. I'm not calling to actually reduce the price of your home. We're just going to have an active conversation about the price of your home, so that way we can stay on top of the market. The good news is, is when you have those conversations, if they've been getting the email drips from your MLS and looking at the properties that have come across their face, whether they're sold, under agreement, expired, whatever, and if they've been getting your marketing data, a lot of times when you'll call, they'll be like, it's time for us to re reduce the price of our house, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? You'll have those conversations, they'll be a lot easier. So, but, and, and you need to say that this is happening ahead of time. You need to like, you know, the best way to catch an elephant is not to drag it down from behind, but to dig a hole in front of it and wait for it to fall in, right? <laughs> It's true, right? I mean, so this is how you do this. You, this is how you dig the hole. I've got like so many stupid metaphors, Mercedes. Like, <laughs> my family hates me. It's terrible. So, but seriously, my kids say that all the time. Dad, you sound like a coach right now. Do not coach me. My two oldest daughters, Mary Frances, 16, and Emma, 14. You're coaching me. I'm not listening. I'm like, it's good advice. I don't care. I'm not your client. I'm like, okay, no problem. Fair enough, see if I pay for soccer next year. So anyway, which I do anyway. So anyway, moving right along. So point is, is you wanna have that conversation with people and let them know because, and then you wanna, you wanna implement it, right? You wanna follow through. But by doing that, you know, you know when you have to have a conversation about pricing, um, it's a much easier conversation. Plus, if you've not talked to somebody in a while and they're able to get the price reduction, calling them is excruciating, isn't it? Oh, I haven't talked to the Jones people in about three weeks. Oh. You know, oh, they need a price reduction, but I've got no relationship with them, so how easy is it gonna be talking about the price of the house, right? But if they're getting market data from you, if they're getting MLS strips from you, it's like you're paying attention to them. If you're calling them every three weeks, not too much time goes in between, just regarding pricing, not too much time goes in between contacts to the point where you don't feel like you can have an active conversation with them about pricing, fair? You with me? All right, nice. So once you get through this, do you see how uh, getting the right advice could help you sell your home for up to three to 5% more money? They're gonna say yes, this is key. Yes, 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 seven yeses, right? You get seven yeses. In addition to any tie downs you have in here, truckloads of yes momentum. If they said yes to all this stuff, you're eventually gonna ask them, hey, listen, you know, based upon what you've seen tonight, are you as comfortable as I am that I'm the best job, the best agent for the job? They just said yes 100 times, you would hope so, right? Cool, all right, stand up. Bow to your partner, all right? One person role plays in the other. Hey, um, can I just ask if we turn, when we turn the music on just a little bit lower, please? That would be awesome. All right, you're on. Fire away.